Megan Hudson. I'm a homeschooling mom of two and I'm a homeworks by precept consultant. Today I'm going to be showing Math 3 from BJU Press Homeschool to you. There are several parts to the Math 3 kit. The first is the Math 3 Teacher's Edition, the Math 3 Student Work Text, the Math 3 Student Review Book, the Math 3 Review Answer Key, and finally, the Math 3 Student Manipulative Packet. Now let's jump in and let's look a little bit more closely at these books. This is the Math 3 Teacher Edition. This is probably the most important book for me as homeschool mom and teacher because this is where I will look to find the lessons to present the material to my student for the day. Let's take a look through this book. This book starts out with a table of contents. And as you look through the table of contents, you might find that some concepts are repeating themselves. For instance, in chapter six, we will learn about multiplication facts up to five. And in chapter 11, you will learn multiplication facts up to 10. In between, the chapters have nothing new with multiplication, but during that time they will be practicing their multiplication facts up to, ten, to five that they learned in chapter six. During this little bit of a mental break in concepts, you're actually going to find that your students are, are solidifying their multiplication facts up to five so that when they get to chapter 11, they're ready to go deeper and learn more multiplication facts. I found that for my own kids that having a break in between chapters like this actually helps them understand the concept a little bit more so they're ready to go deeper later on in the other chapters. After the table of contents, there will be a page about BJU Press Math and their approach to teaching it. There will also be a two pages on your instructional materials that we will be talking about in this video. There's also a page with a sample lesson. If there's something in your lesson that you can't find, this is a great page to go back and reference. This will show you where to find your material list or your notes or your practice and review. So if you can't find something, this is a good page to look back at and see if you can find a hint on where to look in your materials. There's also a page on review features and on teaching tips. The next page is actually a section of pages called the scope and sequence. I use this page anytime I'm planning my lessons for the week. It is a quick glance to see what I'm going to be covering within the chapter and the future chapters. When I look at these pages, I can quickly find the lesson number, the TE pages that I need for that lesson, the work text pages I will be assigning to my student, the skill focus that we will be addressing for the day, our practice and review for the day, and also any Bible truths that will link to our lesson and also link back to our Bible Truths lessons in our Bible book. Now each chapter has a section in the scope and sequence. And as we flip through, you might notice that they are color coded. These colors coordinate with the color on the border of the pages in the chapter. These colors also coordinate with the chapter colors in the student work textbook. At the beginning of the chapter, there is a detailed plan of what you'll be covering within the chapter. There we will have a list, lesson number, a topic, lesson objectives, and even a chapter material list. The list will tell you what you need from your visual packets, your student manipulative packet, any instructional aids you might need, and anything else you might need to be successful in the lesson. One of our favorite parts about this book is following the adventures of Hal and Horatio. Hal is a little boy who's traveling around to get pictures at national parks across the country. Horatio is his pet squirrel. Hal and Horatio go to many different parks and learn about information about each park. And while they're doing so, they are also learning about new math concepts. They will be used to introduce many of the math concepts within Math 3. We love seeing what Horatio and Hal are up to at the beginning of many of our lessons. I'm going to jump ahead now to a lesson farther in the book. This is lesson 47. When you get to the lesson page, you'll notice in the top left corner, it will tell you what lesson number you're on. 
This was lesson 47. It will also tell you which pages to do or to assign to your student in the work text and which pages to assign in your math review book. Following those information, you find that there are objectives, teacher material lists, and student material lists. Now, the reason I picked this lesson to look at was because I noticed that we needed multiplication flashcards in our teacher material list. In a little bit, I'll show you where those are found in the student manipulative packet. Each lesson starts with a practice and a review from previous lessons. And in this lesson, it said memorize multiplication facts. So that's why we needed the flashcards. Then we have an introduction to the lesson. In this lesson, the introduction is being done by Horatio and Hal, and they'll have a little story. And then I will begin the teaching for understanding portion of the lesson. Now, when I look at this lesson, I see that it looks a little bit intimidating, but it really is pretty easy to follow. Anything in black is information for me as the teacher to read on my own. Anything in blue is what I will be saying to my student. And anything in red is the response I'm hoping they give me when I ask the question in blue. When I'm done with the lesson, I would then assign the two pages from the work text and I have the answer key right here in my teacher's edition book. If the lesson did not go as well as I had hoped and I need to reteach the lesson, I actually have access to reteaching worksheets. They are located on the teacher toolkit CD at the back of your teacher edition book. Along with these reteaching worksheets, you could also find the answer key to the review book, visual aids that are in full color that would go with the lesson, and what I like to do for the visual aids is I like to download them onto my computer and then upload them to my cloud so that it syncs with my phone. Then when I'm doing my lesson, I can pull up the picture on my phone and show the visual aid to my student as we're going through the lesson. There are also fact family review sheets for adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing on the teacher toolkit. And there's even a section of enrichment activities. I printed off a couple to give you an idea what these could look like. In this particular enrichment activity, I have a picture of a whale with a bunch of numbers in it, and the instructions say circle the groups of four numbers whose sum is 18. This might be something fun that my child would want to do, and he would enjoy finding new sums of numbers, and they're just going to be clumped within the whale. Here's another enrichment worksheet. In this particular lesson, we would be looking at fractions. This enrichment worksheet has us relate music notes back to fractions. So we talk about whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, and eighth notes. It's an interesting way to tie music and math together and a way to show that math does occur in real life. So this is the Math 3 Teacher Edition book. This is the Math 3 Student Work Text. On the front cover, we have a picture of Hal and his pet squirrel Horatio. And when we open up the book, we find that this has an easy tear binding so that we can easily remove the pages and put them into a three ring hole punch. All of the pages have already come pre-punched for you. As we flip through the book, you'll notice that the pages are in color. When I assign a worksheet, it would be the front and the back for one day of work and I would assign every single problem in the work text for students to complete on that day's lesson. At the end of each chapter, there is a chapter review that's also front and back, and then there's a cumulative review that will cover information from previous chapters of the book, and that would also be front and back. So when I do the work text, I do assign every single problem for my student to complete. This is the Math 3 review book. Now this book I use to supplement my work text. If I find that my son is struggling with the concepts I taught him in the lesson, we can come to the review book for extra practice. The way this book is set up is that the front is the information that you learned in the lesson, so the new information, and the back of the page is review information from previous lessons. I might assign every other problem. I might assign a clump of problems. I might also assign problems that I know that we struggled with for the day. So I pick and choose the problems I want my child to solve. At the end of each chapter, there is also a review worksheet 
that is front and back for that specific chapter, and there is the cumulative review for all the previous information. So this is the review book, and again, I don't usually assign all of the problems. I pick and choose what we need more practice with. This is the Math 3 Review Answer Key. In this book, you will not find any instructional information, and instead you will just find the answers to the Student Review Workbook. I appreciate this book because it means I don't have to work out the problems before correcting my child's work. So this is the Review Answer Key. This is the Math 3 Student Manipulative Packet. When you first open up the packet, you'll find a preparation guide on the front cover to give you an idea of how to break this manipulative packet apart for easy access throughout the year. You're going to start with some charts that will help you with place values. You also have a multiplication and an division mat, and later on in the book you're going to find some cubes that look like this and you can use it to make groups. So this can help you with your math families for multiplication and division. There's also a clock that you attach the hands to, a thermometer, and a place value pocket chart. You're actually going to fold this chart to create a pocket, and you're going to be able to use the numbers that are provided a couple pages later. All of these are easy to punch out. It's just cardstock, and they have little punching out spots already pre-cut. You just have to punch out your pieces. There are also number cards that have the number on one side and the words on the opposite side. And you have your operation symbols. You even have a centimeter ruler, and you have an, a ruler in inches. These are those little squares that you can pop out to use for your multiplication and division charts. And then you can also use them when you're doing place values with your 100 squares and your 10 strips. And there's a bunch of those in here, so I'm going to jump ahead. We also have some shape cards. We have circles, triangles, we have hexagons, and we have trapezoids. We have squares, rectangles, pentagons, and octagons. More squares and rectangles and some rhombus. And then we have some counter cards to use as uh, also on your multiplication or division charts as acorns. And then if you don't have access to a jar of real change, they give you punch outs of different money that you can use with your money lessons to help understand the value of money to help re with recognition of what the coins and the bills look like. And there's also a section to help with fractions. So when you line up the half bars on top of the one hole, it should fit the entire thing. Same thing with when you line up the third and the fourth bars, it should fit on one hole so a student can easily see what makes one hole. There's also cards to help with flash cards, sorry, these are flash cards to help us with measurements and units of measurements. One side will have the blank, the other side will have the answer. And you remember when we were in the teacher's edition looking at lesson number 47, it said we needed flash cards. Well, the next several pages are flash cards for you to punch out and use for review. One side has the blanks, the other side has the answers. And that's the student manipulative packet for math three. So this was math three. The only thing I didn't show today was the math three test and the math three test answer key. These packets do come with the parent led textbook kit. You can also purchase them individually as needed. They include a test for the end of every chapter in the math three book, and you can use them right after the chapter review. If you have a student who is taking math three and maybe they are needing an extra challenge or they are high achieving and they just need a little push don't be afraid to pull out those enrichment worksheets from the cd at the back of your teacher's edition book 
Print out those enrichment sheets to give them an extra little challenge. They'll still be using the same concepts they learned in that day's lesson, but it'll be a little bit harder and it'll give them a little bit more ability to think and reason through in a way they might not have thought about. If you have a student who is struggling or just needs a little bit more extra help, remember that in the teacher's edition in that CD, in the teacher toolkit CD, you can print out those reteaching worksheets to use as extra examples to work through with your student. You can also modify your assignments as needed. If your student is just struggling through those work text problems and you notice that maybe problems one through four look identical in style, maybe you can work out problems one and two with your student and then assign problems problems three and four for them to work out. The goal of math three is for them to master those concepts. How you get there is going to look different than somebody else's how they get there. You need to individualize this for your students. So don't feel like you can't modify. Modify away. Go for it. However you need to get it into your students' minds and help them master the material, that's what you need to do. If you have any questions about math three, Feel free to reach out to your local HomeWorks consultant. We would love to answer your questions. I hope you have a great day.